The World Before was written by Karen Travis and was published in October 2005. It is the third book in the Wessahar series. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Plot Summary. The Bazaria no more. The effects of the cobalt-salted nuclear weapons have had devastating effects on their population and has wiped them out completely. Aris and the rest of the Wessaha have a strong desire to see those responsible punished. They have already destroyed the Acteon and its crew that refused to abandon ship. Those who did are now the occupants of the habitat called Uma Station on the planet Uma, as it is called by the Isenj who live there. Aris is battling his conflicting loyalties and genetics. Part of him wants to blame Bennett for Shan's death as he was involved and another part recognizes that Bennett now shares genes with himself and Shan. Aris and Bennett take a trip to the transplanted colony from Constantine, now called Marankas. Aris feels the need to see the Garrod family and see to the colony's well-being. He finds, unsurprisingly, that he is no longer welcome. They admit him as they do not have the force to stop him but they make their feelings clear. Eddie Michelat is increasingly becoming more involved in the politics of the different worlds interacting. He is friends with the ISENJ minister UAL, who is finding that as he fights to preserve his world from the potential wrath of EQBA's Vorhi, so Uma seems intent on its own destruction. He is inescapably bound to Wesser A as tries to honor the memory of Shan Franklin and her sacrifices for everyone involved and his growing friendship with Aris, Bennett and the Wesserha community. He still is a reporter at heart but that seems to be changing as his conscience affects his decisions for stories more and more. The information he provides now has the power to create war on Earth and the realization is sobering. Eddie decides to tell the real reasons for the destruction of Christopher, the death of Shan Franklin and also of the coming of the world before and its possible ramifications, to the people of Earth. Wessaha has demanded the delivery of Mohan Rayat and Lindsay Neville. Minister UAL has been told by his government that they will only do so only if the destroyer of MJAT name given to Aris for the destruction of the ISENJ city on Bezuij is turned over to them. UAL, knowing that the Wessaha do not negotiate, has decided to oppose his government by secretly allying with Eddie and the Royal Marines at Uma Station to capture Neville and Rayat and turn them over to the Wessaha. He knows this will be the end of his career and possibly his life but for the sake of Uma, he feels he must do this. The Wessaha scouts have discovered the body of Shan Franklin. Nevian takes a shuttle out to recover her body. To her surprise and astonishment, they discover, once her body is aboard, that Shan is still alive. She has been floating, frozen in the depths of space for months and her kanatat has somehow kept her dormant but alive. Her body appears as a mummy, waxy and emaciated. They return to Fanar and reveal this to Bennett, Aris, Eddie, and the rest of the Fanar community. They immediately set about taking care of her to nurse her back to health. She does eventually recover enough to wake up. Meanwhile, the world before has come. A patrol ship lands and disgorges a crew of only males. They are the first ship and advise that another will be along as well. The Wessaha do what they can to be accommodating but Nevian does not like the way the EQBA's males seem interested in Kanatat. Eventually the second ship from EQBA's Vorhi arrives and it is massive. The ship itself rearranges and two smaller ships split off from it, one to reconnoitre Bezuij and the other for Uma. The tension on Uma heightens with this and the ISENJ try to make the Wessaha withdraw but to no avail. Shan is filling out and getting stronger thanks to the care of Adi and Aris. She finds that she has feelings for both men and Aris, whose people practice polyandry, finds this acceptable and would like a house brother but fears that Shan will come to prefer Adi because of their shared homeworld. Adi is having a harder time contemplating a polyandric relationship but is coping as best he can. As Shan gets stronger she begins getting involved in the politics and the goings-on of Fanar. She also makes a trip to Bezuij to view the destruction and what the EQBAs are doing to repair the damage. While there, they discover that the blast did not destroy the Kanatat and that there are some survivors of Bazeri. The Bazeri only want to talk to Aris, though. When Aris journeys to the world, the Bazeri tell him that they want those responsible turned over to them for balancing. Aris knows that the Bazeri would include the Royal Marines in their list of those responsible, so to protect Adi, Aris lies and says that it was just Neville and Riot. 
The Bazeri also want Aris to come stay with them underwater to help them rebuild and recover what they've lost. Aris is torn by his duty to the Bazeri and his duty to stay with Shan and make her happy. The EQBAs are moving right into their roles as peacekeepers and environmental control. They advise both Earth and Uma to prepare for their coming and the changes that will entail. In the instance of Uma, population control and environmental cleansing, and in the case of Earth, they plan to restore the plants and animals held in the gene bank, whether Earth likes it or not. They are also cleaning up the damage on Bezuij in record time. On Wesaha, one EQBAs named Shapakti, is performing miracles. He has found a way to separate Kanatat from its human host, using sample tissue from Shan, but not from its Wesaha host. He also started creating a jungle habitat using DNA and genomes from the gene bank. Aris decides that he will go live with the Bazeri in spite of the pain it will cause him to be separated from Shan. Adi wants Shan to be happy and feels that he is in the way of Shan's and Aris happiness so he decides to force Aris not to go. The solution presents itself in the form of Mohan Rayat and Lindsay Neville. Lindsay wants to redeem herself and not die and feels that the best way to accomplish this is to live underwater and serve the Bazeri. This would mean becoming infected with Kanatat. Adi agrees to this and infects both her and Rayat and send them to the depths with the Bazeri. Shan knows nothing of all this at this point and seems to finally accept her role as an Isan to Adi and Aris in their polyandric relationship. <laughs>